It's wonderful being with you today, you wonderful people of God, beloved of, of the Lord. I am with some wonderful friends here. I'm at God TV in Pensacola, and this is Ward Simpson. He's the boss. <laughs> and this is Scott, and Scott works with you. Yeah, he's on our board. On the board. And we've had a be beautiful dinner today and a great day. I preached for Pastor John Kilpatrick today. Ah, oh, the presence of the Lord was so precious. Mm. But I want to talk to all of you, and we have a little amen corner, by the way, back there. <laughs> yes. Yeah, thank God, yeah. Some of uh, God TV staff and our staff. And what I want to talk to you about today is something I, I think is so important that would change your life. And it's something that I, in fact, experienced when I was young and still do to this day. Ministering to Jesus. Mm. How do we minister to the Son of God? Now, I'm not talking about ministering for the Son of God, okay? But to the Son of God. Mm. And there's a great secret here because I believe God Almighty uh, rewards us without us, without us asking for anything. Mm. He rewards us for ministering to Him. Wow. But first, let's pray. Wonderful Lord, I pray you'd use this beautiful time here, Lord, with Ward and Scott, your sweet people with us, Lord, to speak to all of us about what you want, your heart's desire. Mm. We thank you. We love you. And a million thanks for the privilege. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. I'll tell you a little story to start with. When when I was a kid, my dad was tough. He was six foot two, two hundred and something pounds. We were all scared of him. All my mom had to had to say to scare us, I'm gonna tell your father. We all would hide under the bed or tables. <laughs> and and uh, when I was a little boy in, in Israel, I saw a little toy gun, plastic gun in a store with a with Colors that would roll on the back when you shoot that little plastic gun. And I said to my dad, I said, can you buy me that gun? No. I asked and I asked and I asked. No was the answer. Finally, my mom said to me one day, she said, go sit on his knees and play with his earlobe. <laughs> I said, mom, he'll probably slap me. <laughs> she said, go sit. And I was probably, I don't know how old I was, but I was just a little kid. She said, go sit on his earlobe. And it's amazing, I even remember it. And play with, uh, go sit on his knees and play with his earlobe. And I was scared, so I did. So here I was playing with his earlobe and he wasn't very emotional. My daddy didn't show a whole lot of emotions. So he looked, back, he looked down and he said, what do you want? I said, I want that gun. He went all the way to Haifa from Jaffa to buy me the gun. Wow. So I knew I, I touched some special button mm. where it touched his heart. You know, the God we serve, mm. if we can just find that button, mm. what is that button? It's good. It's ministering to him, ministering to the Lord. Everything is ours if we just know how. I'm not talking about preaching, you know, ministering to the crowds. That's ministering for the Lord. Mm. But let's talk about ministering to the person of Jesus. Mm. I, want, I want to read you a story from the Bible. In 1 Samuel 3, it says, And the child Samuel, think about this, a child Samuel, ministered unto the Lord. Now, how old was he? He was about 8, maybe 10. He ministered unto the Lord, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. So here's, here's a time of drought in Israel. Mm. Nobody's hearing God. Nobody is hearing his word. A time of death, basically, spiritually. Mm. And here's Eli, the high priest, who's half blind physically and more blind spiritually. And his sons are sleeping with women outside the tabernacle. A terrible time in Israel. A time of such tragedy spiritually. 
And it says, the word of the Lord was precious, like nobody really heard that much. No open vision. Mm. No, nobody had any experience with God. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place, his eyes began to wax dim. He could not see. Well, that wasn't just physically. He was really more blind spiritually. And it says the lamp of God went out in the temple. Now, listen here. When the lamp of God is out, it means the whole tabernacle is shut down. Because mm -hmm. you can't see nothing. Right. How can you minister to the Lord in the holy place and not see what you're doing? It says the lamp of God was out where the ark of God was. So it was not a good time for, for Israel. But one little boy changed everything. Mm -hmm. And God showed up for the little boy. And then the whole nation was transformed. Think about if a little boy can bring God on the scene wow. by ministering to him. Mm. What can we do to bring God to our family? It's good. Or our churches. Or our nation. He ministered to the Lord. You know what is amazing though? It says he did not know the Lord yet. And the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. Now he's thinking this is Eli calling him. Right. He ran unto Eli and said, here, here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I didn't call you, I called you not. Go lay down. So he went back to sleep, or tried to. The Lord called again. And he rose up again and said to Eli, You called. No, I didn't call. And verse 7, Samuel did not yet wow. know the Lord. Wow. Now hold it. If God should move mm. when a little boy who doesn't know him ministered to him, mm -hmm. what would he do for <laughs> someone who did know him? <laughs> it's like mind boggling. Mm. And Israel was transformed in such a way that the Bible says later that all Israel recognized Samuel as a prophet. And then it says that God did not let one word fall down to, to the ground that Samuel spoke. Now, Samuel became such an amazing man of God. It says in verse 19, And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. Mm -hmm. That God protected what he said. But why? Why? He ministered to the Lord. Wow. And he kept doing it. And all Israel, verse 20 says, from Dan even to Beersheba knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet. <sighs> so here's the, the, the prophetic coming back to, to a nation that started with the word of the Lord was precious. Mm -hmm. No open vision. Mm -hmm. And it ends with, now Samuel is a prophet recognized through, throughout the land. Wow. And the Lord, it says, appeared again to him. Mm -hmm. So if you really want God to meet you, find that beautiful button it's good. in his heart. It's good. It seems, so like, powerful, huh? it seems like we're living in an age where people are more desirous to do something that gets the recognition of man yeah. and call it ministry. But really what you're saying and bringing out is that God is way more interested in ministering to him. And that is, it seems like a, um, it seems like a trap in our day and age. Not that ministry is not good, but some of us are more desirous of getting the praise of man for what we do in their eyes than really. But Scott, <laughs> we cannot give away what we don't have ourselves. Right, right. So when we minister to the Lord, He fills us. So good. And then we can give that to others. So good. So when people minister for Him without ministering first to Him, yes. they're not giving the, the people what the Lord wants to so give them. Mm -hmm. They're giving the people what they themselves have cr come up with. And you know, something that is so, so important. Ministering to the Lord 
You know, when I began the Crusades years ago, I would worship beginning at 2 p.m. And I would stop about 7. I was in Cincinnati, I think it was, when I made a mistake in my prayer time. Oh, Lord, I said, heal your people tonight. And the Lord said, don't insult me. Just like that. I mean, it was so clear. Don't insult me. Hmm. He said, all I want you to do is be available. Wow. Hmm. That's it. Just be available. I walked up on that platform, and 40 people in wheelchairs come, came up out of their wheelchairs when I walked on the platform. Wow. I didn't even say anything. And I was always amazed how Catherine Kuhlman would come on platforms without even preaching most times. I don't even remember her preaching a whole lot at First Presbyterian. She preached when she had the big meetings. And she would, to be honest with you, she would uh, speak and not make sense. And people would yeah. fall asleep while she was talking. Mm -hmm. And Dan Malachuk, who used to have logos, said, that's how she would prepare. I don't know if he was right. But when Catherine uh, had those meetings in Pittsburgh or the shrine, she n didn't preach a whole lot. And I never really heard her preach any time I went to Pittsburgh. She would just come on and start ministering to the Lord, mm -hmm. and the miracles would happen wow. on the spot. So I learned from a young age, ministering to the Lord is the secret to the power of God Beautiful. and His anointing and presence. And so I would minister to him. And that's how my whole life began back. I mean, when I wrote Good Morning, I wrote it as a result of ministering to the Lord. I did not, did not even know that was all in here. Mm. You know. And what is so remarkable about ministering to the Lord is, you know, we all worry about our enemies. All, all of us have, have enemies, right? Okay. But the Bible tells us something about God that's really quite amazing. When we minister to him, when we minister to him, something happens. Let, let me just read you a part of Daniel 7. It says, I beheld, verse 9, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, the ancients of days that sit whose garment was white as snow, the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was like a fiery flame, his wheels like burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him. Mm. Thousands ministered unto him. Mm. 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were opened. But watch what happens in verse 11. I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain, his body destroyed. In response to ministering to the Lord, he destroys Antichrist. Hmm. Why is verse 11 right after this time of ministering to the Lord hmm. in heaven? Because worship causes God to destroy the enemy. Beautiful. Isn't that powerful? Powerful. That we don't have to say, Lord, I have, I, I've got enemies. Please take care of them. God says, listen, you just worship me. I do the rest. Mm. So, so worshiping God, which people today just aren't getting, that's the real key here. Are you saying that worshiping and ministering are the same thing? Okay. Worship is so important you know the, the scene in Isaiah 6, it says about the seraphims, it says how they're, they had six wings, how with two they covered their face, mm -hmm. with two their feet, with two they flew. Uh, covering your face and feet is worship. Mm -hmm. And flying, biblically speaking, is service. So worship has doubled the impact on God than serving him. Mm. So worshiping the Lord is true ministry. Mm. 
That's real ministry. Wow. So think about the six wings. Two, four, worshiping. And two, serving. Mm. So God is showing us that we have double impact on him when we worship him. Beautiful. Than serving him. So, like you say, people want to want to serve. That's wonderful. But they're not really touching his heart by serving. Yeah. They're touching people's lives for him, yes. But are they touching his heart? Wow. Touching his heart, that's the whole Bible. You know, in, uh, in Exodus, there's an amazing portion. You remember God was really angry one day. And he wanted to destroy Israel. I mean, you know, think about this. They come out of Egypt. They see such power in Egypt itself. They cross the Red Sea. The Red Sea splits. God hadn't done that for you, for you and me. I don't remember ever a sea splitting, and I'm walking on dry land, you know. And now they come to the other side, and Moses is up on the mountain, Mount Sinai in Horeb, receiving the law. And they, at the same time, are now building some animal calf out of gold. Mm -hmm. And they worship it. And God says, I'm going to destroy them. Moses understood something so powerful about God. Verse 8, actually it's 34. He, it says, and Moses made haste and bowed his head towards the earth and worshipped because God did not want to be among them mm. and after he worshipped he said and now if I have found grace in your sight let my Lord I pray thee go among us don't leave us because God was ab about to leave yeah, God I feel that just saying mm. about, mm. about it mm. he says we know we're a, a, sniff, a stiff necked people pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. God had said to him, I don't want them. And God changes like this. And he says in verse 10, because he worshiped, I make a covenant now. Mm -hmm. Before all your people, mm. I will do marvels. Mm -hmm. And from there on, God said, I'm going with you. I love it. But why, what, what brought the change? Verse 8. He, Moses understood, I'm not going to change his mind till I do one thing. Mm -hmm. You worship. Worship him. Oh, that sort of Phoenician woman. You know, I mean, think about, please, you know, the bread doesn't belong to you. Yeah. It's the children's bread. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to give it to dogs. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And the disciples came and said, Lord, she's troubling us, please. He ignores her. Totally. Mm -hmm. Till she worships. And when she worshipped, everything changed. Her request was granted. But, yeah. but you know what is really amazing word? It's not that her request was granted. That's not really the miracle. The miracle is she partook of the covenant that God made with Israel that didn't belong to her. Mm. Exactly. Because she was outside the covenant. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That woman was, Jesus said, don't go to the Samaritans. Right. Don't go to the Gentiles, only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, because only the covenant people can receive now mm. from heaven. Mm. Mm -hmm. And she broke through the borders with worship. Beautiful. Worship can literally cause people to break through. When God said, no, you're not going to. There's a border here. You can't cross. Mm. Worship. God says, okay, I'll let you cross. That's the miracle to me. That I think about like God said, okay, no Gentiles allowed. Mm -hmm. But one got in. <laughs> because, you know, Jesus also said a very few times, I think maybe just three times, he talks about great faith. And in her case... He said, this is great faith. Oh, yeah. Because she recognized that she was talking to not just the Jewish Messiah, but her Messiah. Oh. Amen? So I'll tell you what.
That's great faith. And look at what God did. But I want, at some point, I want to go back to Samuel and ask you a question, but I don't want to distract no, from what right. you're saying. So is this a good well, thing? Well, <laughs> you can ask anything you want, but I want you to all, to all know these wonderful people and others here are from God TV, and we've been talking about uh, doing something together. And, of course, we've been friends, the award and I, a long time. I just want to say one more thing about this, and then you can ask me anything you want. But Paul the Apostle, when did God call him? Did he call him on the road to Damascus? No. Did he call him when he went to Arabia? No. When did he really call him? In Acts 13, it says he was ministering to the Lord, not for the Lord. Mm. In Acts right. 13, right. when we go there, it says, now they were in, in the, um, of course, this is verse 1, at the church in Antioch, which is in Syria today, northern Syria. Certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas, Simon called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene and so on. And it says in verse 2, and they ministered to the Lord hmm. and fasted, verse 2. Wow. And the Holy Ghost said, separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work were unto after. Beautiful. Hmm. So God calls people who know how to worship. Hmm. He, he really doesn't call people who don't know how to worship because a lot of, sadly, a lot of people today are self-appointed. Mm -hmm. And the self-appointed end up leaving the ministry after mm. a while because they can't handle the pressure. Mm. Or they make it a business mm. because they have nothing else to do in life, sadly. So they turn it into into some business where now the Lord's name is harmed, you know. Yeah. Uh, I remember a man of God walking up to me up in Minneapolis. I was speaking at the uh, Assemblies of God school up in up there in Dakota or Minneapolis area. I can't remember which city. Mm -hmm. And this man, after I had spoken to the students, I'll never forget him. He had a lot of white hair about in his 70s at the time, he came up and he said, and I remember word for word, I was sitting eating lunch in the cafeteria with the other ministers. Young man, it is evident God has called you and anointed you. Mm. You may know, you may, you may not even know my name or remember me. I have one piece of counsel for you. Never make merchandise of the precious anointing of God. Wow. Wow. Have a wonderful day and walks away. <laughs> And the other said that he was really a very special man. Well, he was. And I never forgot that, that the anointing, people can, can sell it mm. today yeah. because they're not ministering to the Lord. Mm -hmm. See, ministering to the Lord is the key for survival and longevity in life. Mm -hmm. So when we minister to him, and you know, I mean, so many portions in the in the Bible talk about that, like Revelations five, and then I'm done. In Revelations five, it says they were ministering to the Lord. In the last portion of the chapter, it says uh, how the angels uh, in verse eleven uh, were around the throne, yeah. and thousands upon mm -hmm. thousands began to worship. You say, worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power Amen. and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory. And they just began to worship Him, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto Him that sits upon the throne. And the four beasts, it said, fell and worshipped Him that lives forever. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now the next chapter is, God begins to judge the nations. Wow. Mm -hmm. So worship releases the judgment of God on the enemies wow. of the gospel. It's really it's good. good. I mean, it's, it's just, and, and you see it all over the Bible. Ministering to the Lord just touches heart. And, and the most beautiful thing you can do daily, rather than begging God to meet your needs, just worship Him, minister to Him, and those needs will be met Amen. before you can ask Amen. God to meet them. And I've, di I I've discovered that, well, <clears throat> it was 50 years, February 14, 
of this year that I've been in the kingdom. 50 years exactly now, Amazing. it's over 50 years. 40, almost 48 years it'll be in December uh, in ministry. And one thing I've learned about the Lord, when you touch his heart like that, mm -hmm. his reality will become so rich in mm -hmm. your life. You know, back in 73, and I wrote Good, Good Morning as a result of that, mm -hmm. I worshiped every night for a whole year. And I did not understand why one night, or well, two things happened. Oh my, my. <laughs> the Lord, uh, one night, stood next to me. I didn't see him, mm. but I felt fingers, literally five fingers, mm. brush my hair like that, and wow. my forehead, wow. like real fingers. And my whole body went numb almost. <laughs> As I'm worshiping him, he's brushing my, my forehead like that. Mm -hmm. And I never understood why, till later, as I was worshiping the Lord, and then I fell asleep. And I would worship, like I'm talking about, till 2, 3 in the morning at times. Mm. And I did not plan to do it. It wasn't something... I thought about I just enjoyed it and enjoyed being with him mm. and I would run up to my to my room uh, and I'd say Lord I missed you did did I miss anything yeah I remember reading that yeah <laughs> and that really happened to me and there were times when when I would feel I felt at one time physical physical yeah. mm. hands wow. hold me back saying just a few more minutes please don't leave mm. He wants, he, God desires that, that fellowship with us in such a way. Wow. I, I, was in, I was in the UK when we traveled back in the 70s, 74. We were in the UK with the Watsons, remember Nola Watson, and a group that they had called Shekhina or Shekina, Shekina. And I was one of the kids. <laughs> and they would put us in these homes with, with the YWAM people who, had, who, who hosted us from youth with a, with a mission. And uh, I was staying in one lovely home in, in the UK, and I was just ministering to the Lord. And the lady said, breakfast ready, Benny. We're waiting. Come on. And I was about to leave. And again, wow. he said, just a few more minutes. Wow. He was so desirous mm. for me to stay with him. Mm. And I, it just so touched me that the Lord... This is the God of glory. Mm. The God of glory desiring our time mm -hmm. that moved his heart. But one <sighs> night in Canada, this happened in Canada, the devil appeared very angry. It was the first time I saw him. My room got very cold. But suddenly something happened I'll never forget. Like a blanket of peace covered me. Wow. I literally felt, I don't know how to describe this, I felt a heavenly atmosphere come over me. Wow. And I fell asleep. Just like that. Mm. The Holy Spirit came to protect me. But I, but I, many years, I wondered, why did the devil show up? What got him so angry that he came mm. with such anger? I didn't realize I was damaging his kingdom. Mm. <laughs> by ministering to the Lord. Wow. We damage Satan way more Come on. by touching the God the, the heart of God Come on. than touching the hearts of men. Wow. I'm reminded of that verse. Isn't that, but isn't that powerful? It's powerful. It's oh. mind blowing. The crazy thing is is that you can see miracles. Many are gonna come and say, Lord, I've done this in your name, I've done that. And he says, Depart, I never knew you that he's more He's more desirous of an intimate relationship with him than the outward deeds that we can do. Just as you're speaking, it's just, it's a gripping thing that sometimes even miracles can happen through people who don't seem to have an intimate relationship to the Lord. And that kind of freaks me out a little bit. Scott, I want to ask you a question. Why did God create you? For what purpose did he create you? Just think for a minute. Okay. Okay. 
I know the answer. Okay, I'll let you hear it. I want to hear the answer. Good, because I hope he asked no, you. No, I know the answer because he preached that today. Oh, okay. So it's a, yeah. Well, I don't know if I preached it today, but oh. go, go ahead and tell me what you think. Well, if I remember correctly, Scott, God created you <laughs> so that you'd have a relationship with him. Beautiful. Yeah, exactly. But there's Thank you one, very much. one more thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. And it's, it's actually a big part of the answer. Okay. But think about love. God is love. But God created man to share his love with Amen. man. Yes. So we are the results of love. Mm. God created us to share his love with us. Mm. Isn't that powerful? Powerful. But I still have a question. Yes, sir. Go ahead. I love it. I have a question. I want to <laughs> hear it. Because ministering to the Lord, worship to the Lord, sometimes I believe, and in my own experience in my life, I was confused what that was. I think some people mistake that for noise mm. or for singing or for putting on this. So there's somebody watching right now, I'm convinced, and they, they, they want... They can't get to where Samuel was until he was there first as a child. He ministered to the Lord. He didn't even know he was ministering to the Lord. Right? Correct. So was it because he was just told this is what he was supposed to do? I, I don't know the answer. Maybe you do. But at some point, he went from doing something out of a tradition or being taught to knowing God. Because you said when you first read it, he didn't even know the Lord. Correct. So then he began to know the Lord. And I just want to encourage somebody listening that you start somewhere and, and you got to start here and then grow. Yeah, absolutely. And then so how, how do you how do you make sure that you're not counterfeit worshiping by thinking you are because you're following somebody's mm. um, formula? It's a love relationship. OK. OK. When when God Almighty quickens you with his love, which I believe is what happened to Samuel. Even though he didn't know him. Samuel was quickened as a child, as a dedicated child. Yeah. God's Holy Spirit touched his heart in a supernatural way to minister to the Lord. We cannot minister to the Lord in the flesh. Right. We have to be led by the Spirit. Now, in my case, no one ever taught me. No one ever told me. I don't ever remember hearing a message okay. on just... Okay minister to the Lord. So I had the old Bill Gaither Alleluia album back in the 70s. And I recorded that uh, record mm -hmm. on a tape. Remember the wheel to wheel? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the the Eight millimeter. wheel. Yeah. Eight track. Yeah. yeah. So I, I put it and I, I would get up at night and rewind because the, the, the album would... It, was cracking a little bit, mm -hmm. and I didn't want it to get more damaged, so I put it on a tape, right. and I would play that over and over and over throughout the night, mm. and just most times I was totally still, just crying. Wow! And the Lord eventually quickened me in such a way where I just began to to say things to Him uh, not said before, like, "My precious Jesus, mm -hmm. wonderful Savior." Because it comes out of the heart. You but know? even your crying would have been ministry, yeah? Yes. Exactly. Because I would be weeping just yeah. in his presence, mm -hmm. listening to you know, Doug Oldham and Bill Gaither and the others who were on that album <laughs> sing such beautiful songs. But now today, when I minister to the Lord, it's not just with worship songs. It's through his word. Right. When I'm... Like I, for example, yesterday, I'm reading about Josiah, mm -hmm. how he followed God with all his heart, soul, and might, it says. And he was a young boy when he became a king. Yes. And a cry came out of me. You know, oh. just a, a cry mm. that I don't ever want to lose my walk with the Lord. And I'm thinking, here's this young king. And here I'm 70. Here's this young king mm -hmm. going after God with all his heart, all his soul, all his might. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to lose that. Mm -hmm. And I just began talking to him and, and telling him how much I love him. That's good. 
and just the beauty suddenly that erupted in my room. That's good. That's good. And the Lord became so real to me. Wow. And, and then it creates a, a greater desire to tell him how sweet and how lovely he is and how loving and how precious and mm -hmm. how grateful we are, mm -hmm. how grateful I am to know him. And it just deepens and deepens and deepens and deepens till it just be becomes as natural as breathing That's good. to minister to the Lord. So when you begin to do that, and I'm almost done, but when you begin to develop that relationship, God will will meet your needs before you can ask Fantastic. Him to meet yeah. those needs. Amen. Thank you. And and prayer is no longer, oh, I, you know, you're begging for something and you're right. wearing right. yourself out begging and exactly. nothing happens. Right. It's it's refreshing. It's beautiful. It's strengthening. Mm. It's you know, and I believe waiting upon the Lord is ministering to the Lord. Mm -hmm. So they that wait upon the Lord isn't just sitting there quietly getting bored. Right. <laughs> it's ministering. It's yeah. Yeah. there is like a a language between God and you that's not audible. Mm -hmm. Sometimes tears are your language. Sometimes nice. quietness. But you know, there's there's a big difference I think between qu quietness and stillness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Quietness is mental, stillness is spiritual. Wow. And it says, be still, and then you'll know I'm God. Yes. That's and, a huge point right there. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, there's yeah. a well, stillness is spiritual. That's wow. Quietness is mental. Wow. Mm -hmm. But it begins with quietness. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we begin with quietness. Sure. You know, uh, uh, Elijah went to Horeb, and uh, he tried to be quiet. But it didn't work the first time. Right. And then he thought he, he actually missed God altogether. But when, when he heard that still small voice, mm -hmm. stillness set in there in, in his heart because yeah. of God's presence. And God's presence stills the soul and, and, and the spirit. And when that stillness comes in the saints, God shows up on the scene. Yeah, There's incredible power in this. I, I, I don't so know if so you know, I, I don't know if you if you've ever read uh, Madame Guyon. Have you ever read Guyon? A little bit, yes. Oh my Lord, her book yeah. on experiencing the depth of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. changed my life. Mm. Wow. Because what what she talks about is looking within, mm. and what it means to look within. Well, looking within begins with stillness in the presence of God, and mm -hmm. stillness really is when the heart is broken because worship really breaks the heart of, you, of, of, of the believer and a broken heart he'll not despise. Yeah. You know, God dwells, it says, with one who is of a contrite spirit. Mm -hmm. But it, it's, it all goes back to this stillness and the presence of God mm -hmm. where the, the, your longings are so deep you can't put it into words mm. for his reality. Mm. And, the, and the substance of his presence becomes so real in those moments. It's heaven on earth. Mm. It's hard to explain. It's hard to, de to describe the union that takes place mm. with the Lord at those moments. And just one final thing, and then we're going to pray. Um, when we minister to the Lord, what happens, and this is in Ephesians, and I'll just tell you, he gives himself to us. Wow. You know, when, when Moses worshipped him, he did not give himself to Moses. Mm. When we worship him, he does. Mm. And if you read Ephesians, it says that God will give himself to the saints. Wow. It's the most beautiful explanation of what Jesus talked about, I in them, they in me. Yeah. And and there was there was none of that in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. I mean, wow. think think about that. Moses himself could not experience what Jesus prayed for. I will that they whom thou has given me mm -hmm. be with me where I am. And then he said, On the glory which you have given me, I have given them that they may experience that yes. oneness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean the oneness with God today. Okay. I can, I can show you very clearly what worship does. 
I have a, a glass here with water in it. If I had a bottle here and a bottle there and I poured a little bit of this, a little bit of that, can you tell the difference? No. It becomes one. And you could not separate the waters <laughs> to say, well, this came from this bottle, this from mm -hmm. this bottle. Mm -hmm. That's the simplest explanation of oneness wow. with the Lord. Good. Like one with Him, in, in a way, it's hard to even describe. Mm. When I worship Him, when you worship Him, when we minister to Him, He gives Himself to us in such a way, it's a oneness. Amen. It's a precious one. Make us one. There's a little dog walking behind him, but it's okay. I think he's enjoying it too. So, can we pray? No, keep him there. I'm fine. Lord, I thank you for what you are showing your sweet people. And now, Lord, bring them into that oneness with you. Bring them into that fellowship with you, into that intimate place with you. They, they will know you and develop a blessed fellowship and walk with you mm -hmm. as they minister to you lord i pray yeah. you'll reveal yourself more and more mm -hmm. to them and, mm -hmm. and give yourself more to them as you have said in your word amen. we give you the praise amen. blessed be your name forevermore amen, amen. amen. god amen. gave himself to samuel <laughs> think about that little samuel ministered to him and God gave himself to Samuel that now Samuel becomes a man completely taken over by the Spirit of God. And he'll do the same for you. Well, it's time to give to the Lord's work. And I'm going to ask you to give to the Lord's work because you cannot protect your future without that. Financial, I mean, we cannot protect our tomorrow without sowing seed in the Lord's work. And now it's time to sow. And the information is on the screen. And out of love, we give. Because, because loving is giving. And giving is loving. And love is something you do, not just say. So let's do it. And Lord, bless them as they give, Amen. as they sow seed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Protect them, Lord, from financial harm. Amen. Protect them not only now, but in the future. Amen. Bless the work of their hands. In Jesus' blessed and holy name. And God's amen. people said, Amen and amen. amen. Well, the info is on the screen. Go ahead and you can even text uh, your love gift to the Lord. So, much love to all of you. And I'm looking forward to being with you again. Thank you, Pastor Benny. On God TV soon. Amen. So, much love to everyone. Mm -hmm. amen. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.